All right. So drilling down into the program headers, this is what an individual program header looks like. And we pretty much care about everything in there. So beginning at the, the very start, there's the P type. So the most important thing, the most important type of program header that we care about has type PT load. And this is where segments, okay, so let me back up one second. Program headers are going to define a what we're going to call a segment. And so they're going to have a start, they're going to have some end, it's going to be some chunk of the, uh, of the file itself. But only in the case where a program header defines a PT load segment is this something which is going to actually get mapped into memory. So only PT load segments are things actually going where we're saying start, end, OS loader, put that into memory, and we're going to, you know, execute from there later. So we'll see later on with the packed code that, you know, we'll see with normal code, yes, they'll have all sorts of these different types of segments, but with packed code, they can get away with just having two loaded segments, and then they're able to, to achieve their goals just fine. So everything is really superfluous except for the, for the load segments. But how normal programs use these other segments is that PT dynamic, so if we, so we've got a program header and it can say like this program header is going to define some range and that's the stuff that's going to get loaded into memory. Alternatively, a program header can say I'm defining a PT dynamic segment and this is going to hold dynamic uh, linking information and uh, what, what's the more correct term for this? Yeah, dynamic linker, that's the right name, I believe. Dynamic linker. And so what we'll see, the original intent of this in the P specification, it, oh, no, never mind. Okay. I was skipping ahead in my mind to interpret. Okay. Yeah. PT dynamic holds dynamic linking information. You can think of this as it's going to hold some information related to the equivalent of the import address table type area. Right? PT interp is the thing I was trying to jump forward to. This is going to have this segment is going to have just a literal string in it. And this literal string is going to be the quote unquote interpreter for this particular ELF file. So interpreter could mean like the kind of thing you're used to thinking of. It could be a Perl, it could be a Python interpreter, stuff like that. But in the context of normal binary executables, the interpreter is actually the dynamic linker. So what happens is the OS loader will read this string It'll load up the dynamic linker, and it'll actually put the dynamic linker into memory first, and then it'll load up your program according to those load segments, and then it'll say, okay, let's go ahead and run through here, and oh, now helpfully I have the dynamic linker in my memory, so the dynamic linker can go fill in the equivalent of the import address table, all of those function pointers that you need pointing at external libraries. So when you've got an interp section, it's basically just going to be a string to some binary on disk somewhere in the file system, and it's going to be something that the OS is going to say, I need to run the interpreter before I run this binary or before I run this anything. But in the context of binaries, the interpreter is the dynamic linker. All right. And then the last one we actually care about is the P header thing. And this really doesn't matter, but we're just putting it here because you'll see it on commonly. And so PT, P header is saying this is a segment that has my program headers in it. So that array that we showed right here, you could have a segment that says this chunk of the file is the segment for the program header information. But since we already have all that information in the ELF headers, it's kind of uh, superfluous. All right, so that's just the type. So again, what we really care about is the load type. That's going to say here's a chunk of file that's going to get mapped up into memory. Dynamic has dynamic linking information, so it's going to cover some region that has to do with uh, imports and stuff like that. And PT interp is the interpreter, which in the context of binaries is the dynamic linker that gets loaded before your normal program. And we're just going to skip these other ones. All right. P offset, still we're in program headers, still we're talking about a particular segment of uh, the file on disk. The offset is saying where you want this segment to start. So this is just saying segment starts at P offset. So this could be offset zero, saying start at zero and go to something. And um, P V adder is where this thing is going to be mapped into memory. So based on this, what would people say that this would be equivalent to back in PE files? What do we think? 
the thing that's saying, this is where my stuff that's going to be mapped into memory, which field is that in the segment header? Pointer. Yeah, you're on the right track. Pointer something something. Pointer to raw data. Right? In the section headers, we had pointer to raw data that says my raw data in this section is going to start right here and I'm going to map it into memory. And so what would the PV address, V adder, be? Right? In the segment headers, what would that have been in P files? That is where we're going to map it into memory. No, nope, not raw data, because that's about files. So now we're talking about memory. You can look. I don't care, but look fast. All right, so we've got the exact same analog going on. We've got some pointer to file data, and we've got something that's going to go into memory. Ivan, do you remember? It's not the RVA. It is the RVA. What, what was the exact name of that particular field in the section headers? It was the virtual address, I believe. So section headers, virtual address, right? That would say where we want to map it. It was the virtual address was not an absolute virtual address. It was a relative virtual address, but the field name was just virtual address. All right, so P file size, all right? We've got where the file data starts, and we've got how big it is. So what do we think the, uh, the, the, um, that field would be? Any ideas? The section headers and P files. What says how big the section is? Raw size. Close. I mean, you're right, but it's not the exact word. Size of raw data. Size of raw data. I heard it over there. Size of raw data was the section header field that says, here's how big the section is that I want to map into memory. Same thing's going on here in program headers. You start out, you say, where does it start? P offset, pointer to raw data. And how big is it? P file size, size of raw data. Right. Gets mapped into memory at PV adder, virtual address. How big is it in memory? PMEM size. That was misc.virtual size, right? Or just virtual size. Now, uh, there is no notion of file padding in ELF. So we said before that the virtual size versus file size, one could be bigger under certain circumstances. In this case, you can never have a file size which is bigger than the vir wait, file size that is bigger than the virtual size because you're never padding out your file data to the file alignment size. So basically, the memory size should always be equal to or greater than the virtual size. Sorry, equal to or greater than the file size. And why would we think that it would be greater in memory than uh, than it was on disk? Same reason as P files. <coughs> Any ideas? <coughs> Why do we have more memory than we have file data on disk? Because the variables are not initialized. We've got a BSS kind of situation going on. You've got some global variables. They don't have values. You don't need to set them on disk because you just put them up, make space in memory, and they get set as the code runs. So this is, you know, you can see this is very analogous to uh, the section thus far, especially when we have a load segment. Now, we can have these sizes like files. We can have you know, P offset and P size, but this thing will not necessarily even be mapped into memory. It's just saying here's some segment. It has the you know, string for the interpreter. It's only when we've got load segments that we're going to go from P size to uh, from P offset to P si file size and map that stuff up into memory. All right, and last couple things, I hope. Last two fields of the program headers are the P flags. Now this would be, again, very much like section header characteristics. We have flags like read, write, execute, right? So read, write, execute, and they work the same way as you, they're bit masked to the same way that you'd have permissions if you're familiar with Chmod on a Linux system. You know, you set Chmod 777, you're setting the bit for 4 plus the bit for 2 plus the bit for 1, 7, that's read, write, execute. So it works the same way as your typical file system permissions, read, write, execute. All right, so P flags sets memory permissions. And P align, this is segment alignment. And this has to do with virtual memory. What boundaries should it be aligned on? And so what would this be equivalent to back, not in the section headers, but back in the optional header? 
What did we have for alignment back in the optional header that has to do with where sections are supposed to be mapped? Section, section, section alignment. Yep. Optional header dot section alignment says I want you to map it at hex 1000. You'll see basically the same thing here. It'll most often be hex 1000. <clears throat> so same thing I said. It's because behind the scenes the OS deals in chunks of memory and sizes of hex 1000 on Intel. Oh, this is just showing the difference between a dynamic link thing and a non-dynamic link thing. You'll just have this extra dynamic segment, for instance. This will show you where the dynamic linking information is going to be uh, within memory, essentially. So it'll say, we may have a load segment that says, um, you know, right here, we've got... <clears throat> We've got the second load segment. This has the same sort of information as this hello world we were just looking at. And it has the 600E18. And so it goes from 600E18 to 61020, like we said last time. But then the dynamic information is right here at 600E40. So if you wanted to know where within that load segment the dynamic linking information was, even if you had no section information, and that's the key thing here, we said section information is optional segment information isn't. If you need to find the dynamic linking information, you can use this segment header or this program header in order to know that it's going to be at virtual memory 60E40. And so the dynamic linker is going to want to know where the dynamic linking information is, right? We've got the string telling us the dynamic linker is going to be processing this binary. So we'll get into that uh, a little bit further. So that was dynamic link. And when it's got no dynamic link, when it's a statically linked file, so I just did GCC and I added on the static, then we have no dynamic uh, program header, right? So it's saying, all right, first of all, there's no interp section, right? There's nothing telling us where there's a string to an interpreter, and there's nothing telling us where the dynamic link information is going to go. We do have a TLS here for no apparent reason. I, I'm guessing that's coming in from the other code that we just added in, right? We statically linked in a bunch of other code. And some of that other code must be using TLS storage for some reason. But certainly my hello world is not using TLS storage. 